So we have most of our parts now um, primed. Um, we have primed the SOE version in uh, grey. Um, and as you can see, we've started laying down the interior green. And I'll come back to that in a second. And we have primed the uh, Finnish Air Force version in white. Um, I prefer uh, white primer when I'm painting white. Um, I just think it, it makes life easier. Um, and that's gone down quite well. Um, the white primer is Vallejo um, and you have to put a bit of flow improver in that to get that through your airbrush. Um, the grey is Ultimate, which I think is Steiner Res repackaged. Um, and then the interior green is this Vallejo Model Air uh, Pale Green, which is a um, couple of shades lighter than it should be for, for cockpit green. Um, but we're going to put a, a wash on it, and that's going to darken it up a couple of shades, so it balances out. So I deliberately go slightly, uh, slightly paler, and this paint goes down really well, and it brushes really well, so we can touch up and, and, and so on and so forth, which is what we're just doing here now, just um, touching up some of the the components. Some of them we've brush painted anyway, so this fuel tank. Um, the strapping have done in the green and then we'll paint in the silver or aluminium colour of the tank afterwards um, and obviously the raised detail will, will stay nice and green and, and we'll paint up to that and that should just pop out lovely. Um, so we're just I'm just going through that process of, of getting things where I need them to be uh, ahead of assembly really. So when I've done that um, we'll come back and we'll look at, um, at putting some bits and pieces together. So I'm carrying on with um, painting up these parts and we've put down um, now the silver that's called out through the instructions uh, and I've used, I've actually used um, Leo's um, metal colour um, steel. Um, that's because I wanted to do the two um, fuel tanks in um, steel ahead of giving them a, a, a wash um, and the steel will act as a base colour for um, some of the other metal colours that are going to go down so um, for example we'll put a chrome into these um, lamp reflectors um, and I find that having um, a, a, metal, a metalised um, silver colour behind it just helps them pop out, a, uh, the chrome pop out a little bit. Um, the same with um, same with the struts on uh, on what will be the skis, um, and I want to have two different sort of tones of silver. Um, I want the engine block and the and the housing at the front to be slightly different um, because they're the the two different. Um, two different castings so I want to sort of try and depict that a little bit if I can so um, I've just used it as a base colour in, in a lot of instances um, so what we now need to do is go back to the very start of the instructions and start again um, because what we've done throughout the, as we built up these parts um, we have missed off um, photo etch parts um, until we've got things painted. So we're going through checking the paint instructions um, and then building up um, what we need to in the way of photo etch. So that takes us back to the seat. Um, so the interior green elements of the seat have been done um, and that looks quite nice I think. Right then, dirty brown wash is done. Um, and I'm happy with where we are with that for now. Um, now with the black parts, what I want to do is I want I want to put a black wash on them. So we're not going to paint them black. We're going to paint them a dark grey. In fact, I'm using um, this German grey. Uh, and then when we put a black wash on it, it'll darken them. Um, I, I think that just looks 
looks a little better personally um, rather than ha the trouble with using something like a, a straight black is you, you then got to be lightening it you can't get it any darker whereas if I use a grey I can darken it and that um, that's my preferred process I guess So I find that the model air colours pretty much are a fairly good consistency for painting as they are, depending on what you're doing. Um, but over time they do thicken up in your palette, so you do occasionally need to add a little, a little bit of thinner. Um, so I'm going to work through the instructions and anything that needs to be black is going to get painted black. So actually we start with... Um, this because the um, top of the um, this handle here is black. I don't think that looks okay. You can see it's quite dark already. Um, once you put a black wash on that, it will really uh, stand out. I think. So the radio unit here is black. And we've got to bear in mind that the photo etch that goes on this will be will be black. So we might have to go a little bit further than a wash in black for the radio boxes and, and anything that's got a black photo etch on. We might have to just put a thinned black down to sort of key it in and that's the danger with the pre-coloured photo etch it's sort of dictating what you do with your colours the other thing um, is that by painting these in the dark grey they will stand out as being a different colour um, to the fuselage which obviously on the SOE version is going to be black uh, and that will be um, a, a, a real black so um, it just makes things look a little bit different um, and that's what you're looking for um, you're looking for something to make things just just stand out and look like their individual components I guess right that is the black done so um, I am just going to give that a moment to dry um, I'm going to put a spot of thinner in that dark grey I'm just going to second coat. And my rule of thumb is thickest coat first, then thinner, then if required, thinnest. But Vallejo paint is such a good brush paint um, that it doesn't give you any problems. And you can brush paint with Vallejo paint and it, and it just effectively looks like you sprayed it on. Okay, that's our three um, photo etch parts that we need to add on to this uh, frame here. Um, we have a little bit of bending to do, so nothing major. Well, it looks like there's a little bend line there for you anyway which nicely stands out in white against the black so we're just putting a small bend in that so that there's an angle and then this part has three little you can see them better in the instructions three little um, arms that need to be bent at a 90 degrees so my daughter's just wandered in if you hear any noises in the background. So 
So to make that easier, we're just going to give me use of both my hands for a sec. And we'll, we'll use our friend Mr. Gravity to hold that down. So we're gluing onto the front of the frame with this one. Um, and it's going in that corner. So I'm putting glue on the top and side edge there. Picked up a hair in the way. Get that out. Okay, that is done. And if my daughter just holds off on the cereal packet for a sec, you can see that. So I'm quite happy with that. So I'm still using the medium glue here. Now I know what people are thinking. They're thinking, but you're gluing paint to paint, so you've not got a strong bond. You'd be absolutely right. Okay, so... Glue on the two connection points. And I'm going to use my rule here as a miniature set square. So place the part in the connecting points, and then I'm going to put my rule there. There we go. So that should be perfectly square. I'm just going to go on there like that. I think that fuel tank's sitting a bit high. So let me go and have a look at that. Okay, so we do have a problem with the fuel tank. Um, when you look at the um, assembly instructions, this um, part, wherever it is, this part here, which is one of the photo etch parts, um, is this here, and it sits on top of the frame there, uh, and then sits on the frame there. So it's spanning the two frames, and those frames therefore have to be level. And the problem I've got is that the tank's sitting too high, so this will rest on top of the tank and is a few millimetres away from resting on that frame. So clearly the tank is too high. Now what's interesting is when we assembled the tank there is two tiny little pips on the tank which go into two little location holes. So the location holes are in the wrong place. Um, uh, and that's causing us the problem. So, going to have to separate the tank from the frame, which is phenomenal pain. However, we can't build the model till we've corrected this. I'm going to very carefully. Okay, it's off. I'm going to have to do some additional clean up now on the tank. Get some of that glue down and sand that back but we've not caused too much damage and then what I think we're going to do is put the frame in and then locate the tank in after we've got our little photo etch friend in Okay, so um, we now have the two middle frames, central frames in place, and the top frame. Got to say, this is all quite fragile. 
And I would recommend if you're doing this um, kit that you start with these two frames and put this cross member in if you're using the, the photo etch um, right at the start uh, as the first thing even before you put that in and, and work from the centre outwards it seems to make most sense. So I need to leave that to um, just set for a minute. Okay, two. I've got the upper um, auxiliary fuel tank in. You can see I've had to bend the photo etch back just to pop it in. Um, so we're going to glue that to this back wall in a, uh, in a sec, which will straighten it all up, and then we can put the missing photo etch in. So, um, yeah. Can't see any other way around it. You've got to put this photo etch part in before you put the tank in, um, and the, that photo etch part sits on there. So the only way you're getting it in is by a little bit of folding, uh, folding out, and then pushing it back in. So it's not ideal. It would have been better if this was a separate uh, bulkhead, and maybe. On reflection removing this and gluing it in as a separate item is your way forward it it's actually the um, photo etch parts that Edward have added to the original kit that are uh, causing the problems put the two tanks in um, so we've got to put the Photo etch that dropped off needs to go back on here, so that'll be my next job. So I've now made the repair to the uh, photo etch that fell off, which is this piece that looks a little bit brighter um, in the foreground. I like the contrast of that, so uh, I'm not going to um, do anything to grind that one up because I like how it now stands out. So um, we'll leave that as it is. I'm now going to put that on a building vise. For the rest of the work. Okay, my part's now in my building vice. It's starting to look quite busy already, and we haven't actually got many parts in there yet. Okay, we've got the um, little rear facing table and radio set in. You can just see the uh, radio there. Um, which really is starting to look nice. Okay, so we've got an issue with the rear bulkhead, um, which we're going to have to deal with. Um, the rest of this fits okay, so we're going to glue this in place, and then that's going to help me with fitting the rear bulkhead, I think, anyway. Okay, well, that's gone into place. That's always good. So we have our rear bulkhead in and our assembly is starting to come together. So we've got this top piece to fit next, which goes on like so. Just need to check the orientation, that's right. Crossbar goes in, across in a certain direction, so you know that you've got your alignment front to back right. Okay. Quick tidy up. Okay, so. Um, it's been a second or so for you, um, but it's been an hour for me to fit two parts into this. Um, so we'll explain. Um, whilst I'm trying to get these two parts together, I'm just leaving the glue to set a little while, while I talk for a moment. Um, Brett G's building his um, fairy swordfish, his 148 um, fairy swordfish, and he's just having the discussion about whether to do folded wings or uh, fixed wings and it's really an interesting debate he's 
I'm really pleased he's going with folded wings because um, I had the same debate over my uh, Airfix 148 Walrus. The wingspan is huge. And I said to Paul and my partner, what do you think, folded or um, fixed? And he said, well, it looks so much cooler fixed. So that's what I ended up doing. And then when I'd built it, I thought, yeah, that does look nice. But if the wings were folded, it looked that much busier. Um, and I sort of regretted not doing the folded wings. And, I, and as Brett's just been saying, I've never done folded wings either. Um, I've done one folded wing on my 124 Hellcat, um, just so it can fit on the shelf. Um, but I've never done folded wings, so um, when I do my swordfish, I think I'll do folded wings as well. Because with the wings swept back, um, it just looks that much more um, busy and intricate. So I'm really looking forward to what that looks like with the folded wings. Um, anyhow, fitting the um, floor pan after these two halves together is tricky. Um, because we've got this table in the way. And actually what I'd suggest is that you you put the two fuselage together on this rear bulkhead. Don't fit this table until you've fitted the floor pan because I ended up having to trim off one of the four location nubs to get it in. Um, and it took me about 25 minutes to, to work through the, that I can't get that in and I'm cutting a bit off to make it work. Um, but the table sits on top of some location points and that will just plop in easy. So floor pan first, then table. Don't do it my way. Um, but we do these videos so you don't have to have the uh, pain that I have. <laughs> um, so 25 minutes on there, about 40 minutes to fit the um, and the, this sort of structure that the seat goes on. Um, it only just it's only just with the photo etch it's only just wide enough to, to fit inside the frame and what you have to do is have it span the frame and be in the right angle so that the, these rods here go down to the bottom and the rods are a little bit short and the photo etch is a little bit short and you're squeezing things together and basically you mess around Till you've got it between your fingers and it sort of fits and then you quickly glue it in engines so the instructions um, ask for you to paint these parts in dark iron and that immediately made me go really um, because I I can't think of a time when I've not painted these as sort of a cilia, silver aluminium cover with a color with a dark wash um, so I checked my references in, in my um, Lysanda reference book and sure enough on, on three different engines they were really dark so um, that's what we're doing. Um, we've got to paint a number of parts. This is the um, SOE engine, this is the Finnish engine so the more basic engine um, and we've got a number of parts here um, that all need to be uh, painted in the dark iron. I also have three photo etch parts, these little rods here, which which go on this and I can't quite work out where, um, but they do go on here. So I'm going to paint those in the dark iron at the same time while we're at it. Um, now also the instructions ask you to paint the exhaust um, dark iron and they don't really say anything about the collector ring, um, but when you look at the pictures on your colour shout out, let me just find you one. Apologies for the arm. You can see that the exhaust and the collector rings are all the same colour. So, looking at my references, that's definitely not dark. Um, Iron and it's not that sort of burnt, burnt iron bronzy colour that I often use for those things. It's much more of a silver colour. So we'll be using um, um, a burnt steel type colour for, for those, uh, which gives us some opportunities for a, a little bit of heat weathering on, 
on the exhaust structure as well. So that's sort of what we're doing in this um, next video, depending on how long it takes, whether the video is just based on engines or whether we will go back to the scratch building in the cockpit, I'm not sure. So it all depends on how long it takes to get this done. But we're going to use uh, Tamiya's um, dark iron, and as you all know, I'm not a massive fan of Tamiya paint, but uh, for brushing at least. So we will give it a go. Now, a little comment on uh, on this because. There's been a bit of a debate recently on some Facebook channels about, uh, sorry, Facebook forums on whether you actually should pre-thin Tamiya paint or not. So a lot of people, um, when they get a jar of Tamiya paint, put um, the X20 thinner into the jar up to the bottom of the neck and then that's pre-thinned. Um, but then... There's been some debate about over time that damaging your um, carrier chemicals in the paint and that uh, it can cause you some issues. Here's my view on it. If you use the paint very occasionally um, and, you know, there might be a few years between using it and using it again, then that might be the case. Um, but I've got Tamiya paint that I pre-thinned in the bottle and have had for five or six years uh, and have had no noticeable issues with um, the paint separating or anything like that. So I guess it depends on how long you store your paints for. Um, what I can say is I've never had that experience. So I don't see an issue with pre-thinning the paints personally. Um, but I also quite like to thin my paints as I use them so I generally don't put the thinner, um, thinner in unless it's a colour that I use in volume like on a, on a hull or something like that so hull red I always thin um, things like burnt iron depends on what I'm painting and how thin I want it so I tend to thin it um, as I'm using it so I won't pre-thin the paint because I'm not always airbrushing and generally I want my paint slightly thicker if I'm brush painting than if I'm airbrushing so again with everything in modeling there's lots of different ways of tackling the same um, same issue and, and lots of different approaches to getting the, the, the finish that you want on your kit. Um, you just have to find something that works for you and don't get het up if someone says it's wrong. It's wrong for them. It's not wrong for you. Okay, let's see how we get on painting these. Yeah, that's going down okay. Right, I will get this painted up and I think under a black, a black, absolutely a black wash. I don't, you know, don't use black wash a lot, but I think black wash is absolutely necessary on this burnt iron. So um, I'll get these painted up and then I'll come back to you when we're about to give it a wash. Right then, building up the engines. Here's the um, one for the um, Finnish aircraft um, and I've built this up, obviously this is the kit part and there's the, there's the learning experience through there that I can then take to building up the SOE one which is the one that I want to be sort of really smart if you like. Um, first, first thing is um, nothing particularly fits. So um, the um, pistons themselves, these holes here are not 100% true. Um, so you've got some that um, 
nearly touch each other, some that have a bit bit of a bigger lip on one side than the other, which prevents the, the next one from sitting properly. So uh, my learning is we need to sand these flat and take any paint off. We need to sand some of the edges and we need to open up the hole um, by running a knife through it because my reamer um, isn't wide enough to get in there before it's hit the, the bottom of the part. So that's my first learning. Second learning is that this part the uh, that goes there um, doesn't line up with any of the other parts um, even though these are all square and, and, and what have you um, they don't it the length of the pipe isn't quite high enough to get to the top of the piston and hit the point where it's supposed to glue so that was my second learning that that don't fit uh, and then my third learning is that the pistons themselves, once they're on, are too wide to actually go in the cowling. Um, so I'm just waiting for all of this to dry um, and be fully cured before I thin down the top of each one with my uh, sanding stick. Um, so that's three learnings, all of which say this don't fit. Um, and then if you look at the front there you'll see that the hole is not central either so guess what isn't going to fit in that hole correct the propeller um, so this is um, the spinner goes on okay whichever side you want to put it on it fits on okay but what we're going to have to do with that is um, open it up a little bit um, and hope that the fact that it's not been centralized isn't going to give me too much of a problem still not quite wide enough Doesn't help that I painted the part as well. Clearly, it's not just uh, the fit; it's uh, the fact that I've painted the connecting point. Just going to swap out. But it nowhere near fitted, it wasn't like it was just slightly out. Well, there we go. Propellers on, so we can make that fit, and we know the spinner fits okay. So that's our engine assembly. We just need to sand that down so we can actually get it in the cowling. So let me take you through. Uh, what that looks like. First thing we're going to do is open up this central hole um, using the reamer. And test fit my prop. Yeah, that goes. So that's easier to do as an individual component. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is um, take all of these off. Um, but before we do that, it's easier to just go over the tops of each one with my uh, sanding stick and take any uh, flash off from the bottom of the part and any paint. And you can see on some of them, I think you can see on that one, I'll hold it up to the camera, 
you see how it sort of has a little pit that's sticking out to one side um, well that's a molding defect um, so I need to take that back as well now it appears on just one side and it appears on not all of them but several of them and then what I found was when I test fitted these some of them wouldn't sit on the the mounting points and some of them would now I put that down in part to the fact that, that that's been painted um, but it's not just that the manufacturing process is such that the holes um, aren't particularly round and aren't particularly square so if, now we've sanded this back you can see that the the wall on that one is much thinner on one side than the other you can see the walls a lot thicker there quite thick there and that's all issues of from the molding so what we're doing is going in with a sharp knife because like I said my rainbow won't reach and just thinning out those walls so that we can get the part to sit down okay and then obviously we need to test for each one before we glue them in place so just widen the hole to make sure that it sits nicely on the part we want ultimately the important thing here is that we don't see a gap between this and, and the part it's sat on the block um, and that the all the pistons sit straight okay then we need to nip these off and sand the nub off now I know that's taking some of the paint off but we're gonna to have to sand these to fit anyway and you're not going to see the tops which is why we left them on the sprue to paint in the first place as you look at the top of this you'll see there's a little point that it's like a pointy bit in the middle on one side that bit faces forward so we test fit that that's all good So I'm using my contactor on the inside surface for this. Put some one on. And that's my basic process. So I will carry on round and glue all of those on and then we'll show you how badly the other bits fit. Um, obviously I've not looked at fitting this part with the photo etch on and all of these need to be bent forward so yeah looking forward to that right so I'm just dealing with the engine fit issue that we've got and there's a number of different things here that are causing um, problems so the first issue is that the thickness of the plastic of the cowling is different so some parts are slightly thicker than the others obviously you can exacerbate that yourself if you don't line these up perfectly um, and so I'm having to go in and just sand down any raised areas in here and any seams but the thickness of the material is the issue not the seams because actually none of these pistons are actually touching the seams um, so I mean I have a, a very light dusting of primer on the inside of this but if I had painted this there is absolutely no way that was going in so I mean I'm just test fitting at this this stage um, so I need to paint the inside of this before that, that can go in so I also have to take a, a count of that the other issue that we've got is that these um, seem to be too tall and again you can exacerbate that by not having them fit squarely so the, the cleanup is really important 
but they are just too tall. I mean, I, I, if I show you, even with some missing, you'll be able to see. That's touching tight now, um, and I can't push that down any further. Um, and in the process of, of um, I thought I might be able to just slide it down and, and keep it in without any glue. Um, but in that process, some of these started coming off. Now, I probably haven't left it long enough for the glue to dry fully. But what I'm finding is I'm having to take quite a bit off the top of each one. Now, you're not going to see the top of these, so it's not a problem. I'm just making you aware that the fit in this area is not good. And this is the original kit issue. It's not something Edward have done. Um, it's just not good. So it's really important that you get your clean up done really, really well, which I think I have, but uh, um, maybe not, but I think I have. And then you've got to make sure that you sit these really square and that they're not tilted in any way because obviously that's causing you a problem as well. Um, and it's just a case of a lot of test fitting. Um, but it's, it's catching on the two um, sides of each piston. So it's just not happy. Try that, see if that's getting us any closer. And that seems much better now. Okay. Um, right, so the way to build this is to build up your engine block, put your front bit in, slip it in place, then You've got plenty of access then to put this pipe work in um, with a pair of tweezers afterwards. Uh, you're hardly going to see it anyway. Um, yeah. Okay, so that's where we're up to with that. Right, we're going to put some black paint down. This is going to give me um, a view of what this looks like and whether it's right for the uh, fuselage for the SOE version. So I've got. Um, layers model air uh, black there and what we're going to do is we've got the, the props to do uh, we've got the spinners to do um, and I'm also going to do the cowl the cowling for the SOE version so um, first thing I want to do is check that my airbrush is working okay because sometimes um, you can come to them and spend all your time mixing your paint and then realise that you've not cleaned it properly or whatever and it ain't working. That seems okay. So that was a bit of thinner we put in there. So I've already got some thinner in the chamber now. You can use Vallejo Model Air straight from the bottle, but um, it will give you a couple of problems if you do. Um, it depends on your room temperature and stuff, but um, what I find is um, it, it's just a little bit on the too thick side. I like using these for, for mixing for the airbrush. I quite like using these little paint trays. They have a little uh, dimple on so I can, I can pour it into my brush a bit easier. Bring Bring that into view and you can see. There we go. We've got quite a bit on the brush, so we'll load that in there as well. Okay. There we go, that's okay. So Let's start with a spinner, nice and easy. It's 
segundo. That's the second one done. Right, let's have a go at this cowling. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. Let's see what it looks like when it's dried. Okay, and I am as good as out of paint. So what I like to do is just put a, a drop of thinner in the chamber um, while I'm mixing some more paint. Um, and that'll just keep it wet inside the chamber um, and stop anything drying. Um, a little bit more important to do that if you're using Vallejo paint um, or Tamiya paint particularly. I find Tamiya paint dries very, very quickly. It's one of the reasons it's not a good paint for brush painting. It dries too quickly, so you're constantly thinning it. Um, it it's the quick drying time um, that means that when you go over it a second time with a brush that you uh, can then have a problem with um, the paint um, coming off and, and uh, collecting under your brush. Not behaving today, that bottle. Don't like those type of flip tops. Uh, I really should think about decanting it into a better bottle. So, get all the paint out, and then uh, hopefully we've got enough in there for uh, doing the props, and we don't have to go back again. Just try because it is a little bit thinner, heavy that. Okay, that's that one done. That looks okay. Let's check we're all good on here. Okay, so, so we're nearly there with that, but we've got the scratch building to do, uh, and we'll do that next time. Uh, I've obviously I've only done this on one, so off camera I will build up the um, other cockpit, um, which isn't painted or anything yet. It's still in its um, individual parts primed, so I will build that up. So, okay. 
Um, I'm hoping that you found um, that of interest. Um, certainly there's some don't do what I did on there. Quite a learning curve on the fit. It's a very delicate, tricky assembly. Needs a lot of thought and as you can see even with a lot of thought we've come up with one or two little issues. Um, but most of the issues appear to be created by the Edouard Photo Etch, not the original plastic kit. Um, so, yeah, there we have it. It is coming together. It's looking suitably busy. Um, I'm quite pleased with how it's looking. Um, it's definitely worth the effort getting it, getting it together. So, um, yeah, that's it for now. Thank you very much for looking in. Take care, everyone, and I will see you very soon.